The Northeast Astronomy Forum, which is the world's largest astronomy expo, has just concluded this week. So I'm going to go over some of the most exciting products which were announced at NEVE 2024. Let's get started. Our first product started off as a joke in April 2024 when ZWO posted on their Twitter page that they were going to be combining the ASI 2600MC Duo with the ASI Air. And it claimed that ZWO would offer voice control, AI interaction, and one-click image beautification. Of course, I had a good laugh at that. But unbeknownst to me, ZWO was working on the ASI 2600MC Air behind the scenes. With the addition of the ASI Air into this package, it now includes the ASI 2600MC Pro Camera, the ASI 220 Mini Guide Chip, and of course the ASI Air all in one convenient package. And best of all, ZWO is anticipating a retail price of $19.99 USD, which is the same price as the ASI 2600MC Duo currently. So basically you'll be getting the ASI Air for free, which currently is about a $300 package depending on which one you go for. Now looking at some more details of this, you can see that, uh, that there is an antenna at the back of, uh, of that camera. Uh, this, of course, is the antenna for the ASI Air, which will be used to connect to your smartphone or tablet. And uh, looking at the ports available on the back, we can see three DC output input ports. So the first port is going to be the one you're using to supply power to the camera itself. And the other two will act as output ports, which you can use to power any other devices. And you can see four USB 2 ports on the back. So these will be used to control uh, a filter wheel uh, or a guide camera or anything else. You can also use them to connect to your mount. And then there's the USB type C uh, port, uh, which can be used as an output uh, for any sort of high speed communication. And on the front, of course, you can see the imaging sensor that is the uh, Sony IMX 2600 chip. And then there is the little one over here, which is the same chip used in the current ASI 220mm monochrome. Uh, and it has pretty large 4 micron pixels, which uh, are adequate for just about any telescope. And this camera will have onboard memory so you can store your images. And one of the benefits of this integration, of course, is that you do not need an external uh, guide camera anymore or a guide scope. So this will allow you to keep your package fairly compact. It also greatly simplifies cable management, which is always one of my biggest challenges. And you also no longer need a laptop or an external ASI Air to control your uh, equipment. Everything can be controlled directly from your smartphone. So I hope once the product is released, I will get a chance to test it out. And I think this would be a great upgrade for anyone who is using one of the older cameras and is looking for a new color camera. I'm currently testing a night vision device for visual astronomy. So this next product is of particular interest to me. Although it's not an analog device like the traditional night vision scopes that some uh, people use for visual astronomy, uh, the Pegasus Smart Eye includes a digital sensor at the very bottom, which is the Sony IMX533 sensor, which is a very, very nice and low noise sensor. And at the top, it looks like a traditional light piece, so it has some lens elements, uh, which then look down onto a small digital screen. It offers a 90 degree view, which would be quite nice if uh, Pegasus is able to deliver that with good quality. And this is a combination of traditional IP viewing as well as digital assisted astronomy. So I think this will be of particular interest for star parties. Normally beginners or children have a hard time looking through a traditional eyepiece and may not appreciate the faint fuzzies the way a lot of dedicated visual astronomers do. And the current crop of smart telescopes generally uh, require you to share the images on a smartphone screen, which again isn't always a very satisfying experience for beginners or for people who are not astrophotographers. So for star parties, the Pegasus Smart Eye combines the best of both worlds. This should allow you to do some live stacking and generate real time or near real time color images of astronomical objects, as well as save the data for later processing the way the current crop of smart telescopes do. Now, some of the images that Pegasus Astro has shown on their website, such as these, look very promising, but I'm not sure if these images are directly live stacked on the eyepiece or if they were processed separately and are being superimposed onto the eyepiece screen here. But either way, uh, the images look very, very nice, so I am 
quite looking forward to this uh, for the star parties that I attend. Now, the price so far from what I've seen is rumored to be about $1,500, uh, which is understandable considering the cost of the IMX 533 sensor alone and the amount of miniaturization that goes into creating something like this. And the fact that it's powered by just one uh, USB-C cable is quite promising as well. So it should allow for a pretty compact package. And according to the specifications offered on the Pegasus Astro site, uh, of course, it'll have a 90 degree field of view, diopter adjustments for anybody who wears uh, glasses or for anyone who doesn't have perfect eyesight. Uh, it'll support dual, dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for connecting to your phone. It'll have an SD card reader in there so you can save your captured images and it'll work with both iOS and Android devices. So this is definitely going to be on the top of my list and if Pegasus uh, wants to send me a review unit, you are welcome to and I'll be glad to test it out. The next announcement, which although not quite as revolutionary as the first two products we looked at, is the Skywatcher Wave series of mounts. These are harmonic mounts that were just announced at Neve 2024 by Skywatcher. The first is the Wave 100i mount, and the second larger one is the Wave 150i mount. Now, these are, of course, very similar to the ZWO Strain Wave series of mounts. So I do like the cable management options available here on the Skywatcher Wave series of mounts. Uh, you can see that all the cable ports are located at the very bottom back over here, and this portion of the mount does not move when the mount is slewing, so that should help prevent any sort of cable snags of the power cable. Uh, you can see in this picture at the very top that the power cable is coming from here and looking at the front of the mount there do seem to be some options over here as well so it is possible that the cabling is going right through the mount so you can attach your camera and filter wheel and anything else that you might need to route through here. Uh, I can't quite see what ports those are but uh, yeah any sort of cable management supports are always a welcome addition. You can also see that there is a second dovetail at the very bottom, so this should allow you to mount two scopes at the same time. We'll see how well that works out in practice, but uh, yeah, that is always a welcome addition as well, uh, especially since these uh, mounts don't require a counterweight for any lighter payloads, so being able to attach a second camera and telescope at the bottom uh, would be quite useful. I do hope to get a chance to test these out in person and offer you a full review at some point. So it's interesting to see Skywatcher enter the Harmonic Drive mount market as well. Hopefully this will bring down prices further in the future. So I hope you enjoyed my rundown of the products I'm most excited about from Neve 2024. And if you attended Neve 2024, let me know what you thought and how it went. And also I'd be interested in hearing what you thought about these product announcements. So let me know in the comment section below. And if you do want to purchase any of these products in the future, consider using my affiliate links in the description below as that will help me support this channel. Thanks for watching and clear skies.